how can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Namaste. So here I am in India, and we're going to skip ahead 20 verses in the Sri Panchadashi, because these 20 verses basically cover Sankhya, the tattvas. And we went over that recently in this video. And so if you didn't get it, then you can go back and watch that. But basically, the purpose of going through the tattvas is to discriminate them from consciousness. So when you're in meditation and the different tattvas arise, you know, all the way from earth up to false ego, you can go neti neti and recognize that these are not the self. So any objects that are tattvas are part of prakriti and therefore are not the self, they're maya. I mean, that's okay, <laughs> but we are trying to tease out the self from the various manifestations, subtle and gross, of the material energy. So we're going to skip these 20 verses and go directly to another section on the analysis of consciousness and the difference between the self and not self. So beginning with text 37. Anvaya vyatireka bhyam anchakosha vivekataha svatmanang tatta udhritya parang brahma prapadyate by differentiating the self from the five sheaths through the method of distinguishing between the variable and the invariable, one can draw out one's own self from the five sheaths and attain the supreme Brahman. The self realizes its disidentification from the sheaths and its identity with the transcendental Brahman by the method given in verses 38 to 42. This intellectual method has been adopted from the dialectics of Acharya Sureshwar. Text 38. Abhane stula dehasya svapne yad bhana matmanaha sondvayo vyatire kastad the physical body present in one's consciousness is absent in the dreaming state, but the witnessing element, pure consciousness, persists in both the waking and dreaming states. This is the invariable presence, anvaya, of the self. Though the self is perceived, the physical body is not, so the latter is a variable factor. The dialectical process of determining the variable and invariable is called anvaya and vyatireka. Here the two words anvaya and vyatireka have not been used in their technical, logical sense, but simply in their etymological senses of continuance and separation. The self continues in the dream state, whereas the gross body drops off. This is anvaya of self. The dropping of the gross body in dream is its vyatireka. The gross body is separated from the experience of the dream state. Text 39. Linga bhane sushuptau syadatmano bhana manvaya. Vyati re lingasya bhana muchate. Similarly, in the state of deep sleep, the subtle body is not perceived, but the self invariably witnesses that state. 
While the self persists in all states, the subtle body is not perceived in deep sleep, and so it is called a variable factor. The subtle body consists of the sheaths of prana, manas, and vijnana. Text 40. Tad viveka dvivikthasyu kosha prana manodhyaha tehi tatrugunavastha edamatra pritakrita. By discrimination of the subtle body and recognition of its variable transient character, the sheaths of the mind, intellect, and vital airs are understood to be different from the self. For the sheaths are conditions of the three gunas and differ from each other qualitatively and quantitatively. Pranamaya kosha is the condition of the rajas, manomaya of sattva and rajas, and vijnanamaya of sattva. Because of these three conditions, three sheaths of the subtle body have been spoken of. The witnessing self is different from the gunas and hence from the sheaths. So we've been talking about the sheaths also on this channel for a long time. So I don't think there's any need to go over the definitions. You've already, if you've been following this channel, you have already encountered them several times, going back at least five years. So anyway, the self is different from the elements, the tattvas, the sheaths, the gunas, the activities, the bodies, the gross, subtle, and causal bodies, and all phenomena perceived through the senses. So now, what to do? Well, you have to sit down and observe yourself. Watch and see what changes and what does not. What changes is always the phenomena. And what does not change is always the self. The self is aware of the changes in states of consciousness from Jagrat to Svapna to Sushupti and back again. This happens every day. But most of us are unaware of it. We don't know these states. We don't know the terminology for them. We don't understand these conditions. And even though they occur to us every day, day in and day out, we don't notice them. Even though we perceive them, we don't recognize them. So this is to make us aware of these changing phenomena, the states of consciousness, these different bodies, gross, subtle, and causal, these different sheaths, anamaya food sheet, pranamaya energy sheet, manomaya mind sheet, vijnanamaya intelligence sheet, and anandamaya the causal sheath. So these are all ignorance. What does it mean, ignorance? They are different from the self. They are phenomena that arise, persist, and disappear in consciousness. But consciousness remains the same. Consciousness never changes. Only the contents change. So therefore, we have to observe these contents and discriminate them from the consciousness itself. Then we can say we know the self. Now, this is a piece of work. It may take years. It may take decades. And of course, the more knowledge that you get from the different scriptures and by experience, by observation and analysis of your own consciousness, the better you can distinguish them from the self. The self is always there, you know? And one friend said, you know, every time I check, my self is there. 
And I said, yeah, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> and it's true, isn't it? I mean, it's a truism. It's a tautology. But the self is constant. Consciousness is like a mirror. A mirror simply reflects whatever is put in front of it. But it doesn't absorb the qualities of these objects, nor is it affected by them. And the same is true of consciousness. Whatever we put in front of consciousness through the senses and mind, it reflects them accurately. So then, how do we attain self-realization? Once we can understand and discriminate the permanent from the temporary, the steady from the changeable, the self from the phenomena that it perceives, then we are ready to make our ground the self. As it is now, we are grounded in the body, senses, and mind. So we have to undo that. We have to shift our center, shift our ground, shift our idea of who we are from the body, mind, and senses to the conscious self and realize that I never change. I always exist, sat. I am always conscious, chit. And then the next stage is to realize I am always blissful, ananda. That is the complete self-realization. And like I said, this is a piece of work that may take years. It should be because, I mean, we've spent innumerable lifetimes in conditioned consciousness. The effect of the senses and mind and karma, the results of our previous activities. The only way out of this is to cease to conceive of the self identity as a doer or even as a knower and come to the original identity of the self simply as a witness. We don't have to understand necessarily what we are witnessing except to know that it is different from the self. That which is perceived is always different from the perceiver. Huh? And like the introduction music says, how can we know that by which everything is known? Because the Upanishad is asking a rhetorical question. How can we know the knower? We can't. But we can think of ourselves as the knower Think of ourselves as the self, as pure consciousness, one without a second. And in that way, realize the ananda that is our actual birthright and the final symptom of the complete realization of Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.